Right, so welcome back to the live streaming today. So today we want to continue with the discussion that we started last time on our discussion on quantitative methods for business. So we want to look at some revision questions to guide us towards the examination and see how far we can actually go. Actually, we are in the midweek, uh, sorry, mid-semester exam. So we want to go through some questions to assist you, to guide you to actually automatically pass the exams and pass it so well. Okay, I'm coming. Let's see this. Share my screen so we get going. So let me bring up my board so get started. So do all to like the video and share it as well. How are you able to join? Somebody shared it for you to join. So do all to share. I like it as well that others will get the benefit also to join us in that case. In that case, so it's going to be a live discussion session. So if you have any question for us, drop in the chat. Ask all your questions that you don't understand concerning quantitative methods for business, and we are here to assist you. All your questions must be asked, and we'll bring you up and explain whatever you need to understand to pass the exam generally at the end of the day. So that is the goal here for today. That is the goal here for today. Ask all your questions and let us assist you in that case. Okay, so let's get going. So I think the last time we were able to look at the first 17 question, I guess. So we're left with question number, then the first 17, we're left with question number 18 to the remaining section. So we want to look at them in a sec so that we take in question and answers that you have for us so that we answer you and then provide you the level of understand that you need to excel in the examination generally so let's see how we go with the remaining set of questions so we're not able to watch the part two it is actually the first video when you visit our channel on this uh on this learning platform you see there on the home page that was the first session that we had so if you're not able to go through make sure you go through them and also watch this in addition as we wrap up with a discussion for that so let's look out for question number uh then we have here question number 18 i want to bring my butt so question number 18 it is actually an implicit function so we asked to if x square minus 3xy plus 2y square minus 2x is equal to 4 find the value find the value of dy over dx in respect to this so how do we go by this so let's see if i can like i can create some space for this okay come in and create workings for this okay start from here it's an additional working page 
There we go. Okay. So question number 18, that is a question that we asked you look out here. So we have what? We have s squared minus 3, 3x, 3xy plus 2y squared minus 2x. And that should be good. So we are asked to find what? dy over dx from this question. So how do we go by this? Very simple. So here you see an implicit function happening here. So we first have to differentiate the terms individually, generally here as we move along. So what do we do? Straight up, differential of x squared will give me what? 2x. So I have here as what? 2x. If you have any question, you can ask as we move on. So you're going to have here as what? 2x. Okay. Then here we come to differential of negative 3xy. So here, remember, this is actually a product of two functions combined. So we want to make sure we bring the 3 outside and then we differentiate what x and then y. We differentiate x and y. So what do we do? Very simple to go. So here, I'll first have to hold the x and differentiate y. So holding x means I have x here. Differential of y, since I'm differentiating y with respect to x, I will say that differentiate y differentiate x okay and we said that differential of product of two functions will also going to result to what addiction so once you are done with the first part of differential then we come back and say that plus then we differentiate the second part which is what the x so now we'll hold what y and differential of x will give me what, one so that is a differential of what three x y okay then we'll bring in the bracket so that we don't actually add up then we also come in and differentiate what 2y was square so here i'll have the two come and multiply the two so i'm getting what plus four but remember we are differentiating y with respect to s so we have what 4y dy over the x i hope you are following that yeah so that is the whole idea here let me bring it up here okay let me create a space for myself here then what do we do then we come back to that of differential of negative 2x so that one you also have what here to what differential of 2x supposed to get what supposed to get 2 and that should be equal to differential of 4 is a constant so that should result to what 0 so you have 0 here straight up so now once you are done with the differential we just want to make dy over ds the subject make dy over ds the subject so what do we do let's make the y over the as a subject generally. So let us expand. So we have what, 2x, then expanding 3 with what is in the bracket, we have what, 3x dy over dx, okay, minus 3y plus 4y dy over dx, minus 2, and that should give you what, 0. So we want to arrange them by factorizing out dy over dx. Come in, my board is falling. Okay. So now we have dy over dx here, so we can bring them what out, right? So we can say that we have what four, or better still, we can say that we have dy over dx, okay, into bracket four y minus what. 3x all right you can see that i'm trying to what factor out what the dy over dx out generally here trying to factor it out okay so i'll have what dy over dx into bracket 4y minus what 3x okay then bracket close there then i have in what 2x now i have in the remaining one i have in what 2x i have in negative 3y and i have in what negative 2 okay so i have in this i'm try to use this for you so i have in 2x negative 3y and then negative 4 2y so what do we do we just want to represent that also on a different word aspect of the equation so we have here to be equal to so when 2x 
join zero becomes a negative so let's arrange them in order of increasing so i will have what positive two and then i'll have here to be negative two x and i have here to be positive what also let's say we have first positive three y minus what two x like this okay any question you drop in the chart so once we have this the next thing we want to do to divide both sides by 4y minus 3x so dividing both sides by 4y minus 3x straight up 4y minus 3x dividing all by 4y minus what, 3x so we have what our dy over the x to be equal to so here we have 2 plus 3y minus 2x all divided by 4y minus 3x so that is how it's supposed to be generally when it comes to differential of this implicit what function here which is x square minus 3xy plus 2y square minus 2s is equal to what 4 this is how it's supposed to what be so let's take note of that let's take note of that any question drop in the chat for us so that is question 18 now question 19 let's get some goosebump with the issue okay i think we're told to find what with respect to this point with respect to one negative two so if that was the case then that means that our dy over the x this is what we're going to do our dy over the x because we're asked to find the value of dy over the x respect to what the point let me see the point because of this one negative two so we have one negative two so that means one stand for x negative stand for what y so we have what two plus what three into bracket negative two minus two one all divided by four negative two then we have three positive one so let's see so here we have two negative six negative two divided by divided by negative eight negative three so what do we get so here we have negative eight so two will cancel two. so you have negative six divided by negative 11 so we are getting what six over 11 generally so then this becomes the value of dy over dx where the point one and negative two is given so you are good to go in that line okay now question number 19 is it goes to tell us that lpc manufactures and sells a product x per week if the weekly cost and price demand function are so we have what this as a weekly cost and price so that is what nine thousand plus 2x and then the price for which is what 60 minus 2x over 2000 find the profit uh find a profit if the lpc manufactures what 100 thousand product during the week so here you just have to make what profit function the subject so you know that to find profit is the difference between what revenue function compared with the cost function whatever you get becomes your profit function so let me bring that up here so we have what our cost function we have our cost function to be called to then was what let's see it was nine thousand plus two x so nine thousand plus two x okay and then we also have our price function was giving us what let's see for that too it's also 60 minus 2x over 2000 so we have what 60 minus 2x over what? 2000 2000 there okay yeah so how do you then find the revenue function so re realize that at this point the price function is what the price per word the gene that we produce generally so for me to get the revenue function then means that 
I need to consider the number of what items that we produce per week multiplied by the price per unit and that will give me my total revenue function and then compare that to the cost function and I'm good to go to get my profit function. So that means that we need to find what our revenue function. So revenue function should be equal to what? So we have the price function is what? P. Okay. P. And realize that as per the question, we produce S product per what? Week. So that means that our output is what? X. So we're going to multiply by what? X. So here it is quantity multiplied by the price per item so that we get to know the total what? Revenue going to generate when we sell them generally. So here multiply by X. Oh, let me do it like this. So P multiplying what? X. Right, then that should give us a revenue function. So what do we get here? So I know the price is what? 60 minus 2X over what? 2000. All multiplying what? X. This is what I'm going to do. All, more, all should multiply what? X. Okay. So now you just have to what? expand it. Let's expand and see. 60 multiplying X, we are getting what? 60X. And then 60 x multiplying 2 x over 2000 realize that here the 2 itself can go to 2000 or 1000 so we can say that we have what minus what x square over 1000 i hope you agree with me on that x square over 1000 okay so once you get that that becomes our revenue from so 60 x minus x square over what 1000 okay so that becomes our revenue what function 60x over x square. Okay, so let's flow. So once we get the revenue function, that is fine. So now we can compare the revenue function against our cost function to get our profit. So therefore we can say that our profit function, that is what P of S. So let me write this so that you can see the effect. So that we differentiate it through the price function so profit function should be equal to my revenue function compare with what my cost function okay so my cost is what 9000 plus 2x so revenue is also what so here we have 60x minus x square over what i said x square yeah x square over 1000 compare that to our cost which is what 9000 plus what uh 2x so plus 2x and then we are good to go so now let's do the comparison but since we are told to find what what was the question we are told to find what find a profit if lpc find a profit lpc manufactures what thousand product during the week so here we are not differentiating anything we just have to find the profit function so once i know that this is my profit function i know that x is what thousand so we just have to substitute the value of x which is thousand whenever i see x in the profit function that is all so let's go so here we have what, 60 i know x is what thousand so i have here to what thousand okay all right so bring in this then minus what i have here to what thousand squared divided by divided by what thousand okay then i have here to be what nine thousand so another bracket nine thousand plus two thousand here let me bring in the x pull it here small so that you can see the figures okay so once we have this now just want to find the value so here calculator can do the work so simple oh where is my calculator okay let me bring in my calculator just some few seconds for me i'm coming with my calculator i'm coming 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 coming
Okay, so let's trip in this. So there with my calculator to reduce the intensity of, I mean, doing this substitution on the calculator, I mean, working it out rather, sorry, not necessarily the calculator. This is what I'm trying to mean. We can get rid of uh, this uh, function on the calculator. This is how we go. Just have to key this on your calculator. Okay. So the equation is, I want to position this so that we can see. So the equation is what? 60x minus what? x squared over what? 1000. So we just have to press what? 60. Come in so you can see 60 alpha x alpha x minus. So we have here to be alpha x square divided by 1000. So that is the first part. So here, put in bracket here, bracket there, minus. So we have here to be also another bracket 9000 plus 2 alpha x bracket close so once you have this equation on the calculator depend on the calculator you're using okay it can press in solve okay so i'll press in what solve on my calculator i'll press solve on my calculator so when i press solve i will see x equals question mark or you see s question mark depending on the calculator you're using then i'll substitute word in place of s i'll press word thousand I'm doing this in case it's an MCQ question where you have to choose an answer as an option. That is fine. But where it is written type, then you are supposed to what? solve it proper so that it gets your right answer. So it depends on your institution that you're in. It can be a written type or actually an MCQ type. So when I press what? 1000, I'll press equal to sign. Then I'm supposed to get what? 4000. 48,000, sorry, supposed to get what? 48,000. So realize that I'm getting 48,000 as my final answer. Let's see. So here we will have what? 60,000. 60,000. Okay. Then here too, realize that we have 4,000 square. We also have divided by 1,000. So we can cancel 1,000 off. So we'll be left with what? 1,000 minus 1,000 here. Okay. Then compare with what here to we have here to be 9,000. Then two multiplying thousand, we are getting what two thousand. So arithmetically, we have here to be what fifty nine thousand. Okay, minus. So here the difference is going to give you eleven thousand. Okay, so what do we get? So that means we're going to get what forty eight thousand. So this becomes our profit function forty eight thousand in monetary value, but we're not giving the currency as our I was getting on the calculator as what 48,000. It's the same thing generally. So, no big deal about that. But one key thing that you also need to take note here is about when we are giving a course and then price function. At times, the question can ask you to find what, let's say, what is the marginal cost? What is exact cost? Those issues. So, let's use this as a guinea pig to explain those concepts so that we continue. So, let's say, we're giving the cost as such the same thing, which is what 9,000 plus what 2x. And out of the way, asked to find the marginal cost. I mean, marginal cost means you want to find the change of the cost. It's the same thing as finding the word, the first derivative of the function. Okay, so marginal cost will mean that I have cost prime of x. Just have to differentiate the function once. Okay, so I have here to what differential of what 9000 give me was zero because this is actually a constant so i don't even don't bring that then differential of 2s will give me what two so that means that my marginal cost for this function is what two generally like that so that is the differential but there are also instances where you'll be asked to find let's say the exact cost of producing a particular output how do you go about that using the same case. So let's say now let's improve our cost function here. So let's say we have cost function to be, let's say the same 9,000, okay. This time as 9,000 plus what, uh, let's say 0 0.5x 0 squared. Okay, let's say we have something like this. And we are asked to find, or oh, better still, let me add up x to the 9,000, or let me make it 
something small. 4,400x plus what? 0 0.5x squared. This is a cost function. And we are asked to find, let's say, exact cost of producing, let's say, uh, two items. So to find the exact cost means that whenever you see the cost x in the cost function, you just have to see the value of two there. But if you are asked to find, let's say, the exact cost of producing a particular number in a position in terms of arrangement let's say you ask to find the exact cost of producing let's say uh 13th what item 13th item that means you have been given what a position how do you do that how do you do that so to do that you ask yourself that how much do we produce as an organization the total production that we produce is in the form of what x so we can say that the x will be given as a cost function here so for us to know the 13th item we're going to produce is supposed to be what the cost of x plus one the cost of x plus one right so when we add what plus one to the cost that will give us the additional product we want to cost this 13th item that you see here is actually what a position it's just one item that we want to produce but is in what in the 13th what position it's in the 13th fourth position. So to find the exact cost of that, you're going to use the same cost function though. You understand that? But how do you do that? To find that is going to be what? The cost of what? The X. So you ask yourself from before we get to 13, we should be on what the 12th position, right? So that means you're going to have what? The cost of what? The 12th or like say the 13th item, right? Compared to the cost of what? The 12th item. I mean, this is what I'm trying to say. So how do you get the cost of the 12 item? That's where you're going to equate what? X plus one being the additional cost you are producing, which is the 13th item to what? 13. So once you have this, okay? Once you have this, let me cut this off. Once you have this, then we can determine the number, the number of outputs you are going to produce in between the 13 and 12. That will give you what? The 13th position. I mean, in between the 13 and the other number, that will give you the cost of what? the one item is the 13 position so here we will say that x plus x plus one should be equal to what x plus one should be equal to what 13 so therefore we have x to be equal to 13 minus one and we'll get x to be equal to 12. so when you have x to be equal to that means that now whilst you deal with the 13th item is going to what x plus what i mean x is 12 rather so it's going to be 12 plus 1 for we quoted that the cost is what x plus 1 ish here okay so that means for us to find what the cost of just the additional cost that we want to find it is that cost is going to what 13 which is what 12 plus 1 compare with what the cost of producing the 12th item which is what 12 so that, that means we have what something like what cost of 13 minus compared with the cost of 12 and that will give you the exact cost of producing the 13th item so that is the whole idea but at times they can also ask you to find what the marginal cost of producing a particular what like something like this that one means also means that now you're going to at that point you're going to differentiate the cost function if you respect to the cost function, you differentiate the cost function and then whatever you get for you to get also the number for that particular position you follow the same thing i've done here so if we're told that let's say let me create my space for myself i don't know why cramping up the whole space here I'll come in so because these are fundamentals most of the time you see it there so you just want to make sure you understand them so let's say we're also told to find what the marginal cost of producing let's say uh 20th item so that one you follow the same rule so marginal cost additional cost of one so we have what x plus one and that should be equal to what 20. okay so we have x plus one should be equal to what, 20. so we have x to be equal to what 19. so that means that the marginal cost of producing the 20th position should let us produce what 19 output so that means you are going to differentiate what the cost function so once you differentiate that you just have to substitute 19 the cost function and that will give you the marginal cost of producing the 20th word item but if it's the exact cost 
then you don't differentiate you just have to find the number you are going to produce to get that exact cost and then submit it to the original cost function and you are good to go if it's for revenue or any other function the same thing going to do but i was just using the cost function as a basis to explain that for you to understand okay so that is the whole idea i want to bring it to you because you are likely to see in most cases you are likely to see questions of this nature especially in this area so you just want to make sure you understand them generally all right so any question just drop in the chat for us so question 20 question 20 here let's see we have what we are asked to find the integral of what so these are integral function where is my case okay so we are asked to find the integral of what uh the integral of 3x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus what 3 so how do we go by this one two let me take off this and use a space so this is actually an indefinite integral okay because this is an indefinite integral so we have what we have the indefinite integral we have what 3 sq plus what 1 over 1 over x cube okay then we have what we have plus 3 which is going to give us what plus 3 here so it is an indefinite integral okay so how then do we integrate this very simple so integration means that we want to find the reverse of our differentiation okay so all that we do is to add one to the exponent and divide by the result actually so straight up we'll go so we have here as what 3x cubed we add 1 to the 3 as a power 3 plus 1 we are getting 4 so we divide by 4 that is all then we have here to be so for you to also to integrate this you must rewrite this in a more line form by line form i mean that with 1 over x you can also write as what x to the power negative 3 yeah we can also write as x to the power negative 3 so once you have that now you can integrate you add 1 to the 3 and then negative 3 plus 1 you are getting what negative 2 so we divide the result by negative 2 then here to it is x so i say it is x it is 3 which is a constant so now if you want to integrate since you are integrating with respect to x you add x to the 3 and that will give us the integration for the 3 so we have what 3x okay we have 3x remember at that spot it is the power 0 so when we add 1 to this 0 plus 1 we are getting what 1 so 0 plus 1 we are getting 1 divided by 1 that is that so since this is an in in Definite integral since this is an indefinite integral you just have to add a constant say k okay say k say k okay so then or k or let's say c any variable you want to use you're good but depends on the if it's an option type then you will know the constant that they will give it to you okay so therefore we can say that we have yet to go 3 over 4 x to the power 4 minus x i hope you are following that but well, this is negative 2 here so that will give us negative so minus we have what one one over what x to the power two i hope you can see that so that will multiply this so we have what two x to the power one over two x square because negative one plus one will give me negative two so when i reverse it back to the normal form going to what one over x square multiplying two give me what one over s two x square generally there okay then i will have what here to be also to be what 3x plus what k and this is going to be your result for the indefinite integral in relation to that so just add one to the power divide by the uh result i mean divide by the whole expression and then you are good to go generally so let's take note of that okay i see some chart coming in here let's see what we have what is it hegan is saying that as it let's see he's saying that i really love this 
Ah, okay, that is good. Okay, thanks. So, okay, that is that. Let's let's continue. I think that was the only chart that we have here. So, if you have any question, you can ask as we move along with that. So, that is the whole idea about indefinite integral. Okay, okay. So, let's go. So, question number. 21. So this is also what we call a definite integral. So most cases for a definite integral, if it's an MCQ type, you can use calculator to solve it. Okay. But if it's a written type, you just need to solve them, right? Or solve it generally. So you follow the same rule, but once you are done with the integration, you see the limit here. You have the upper limit. The two is the upper limit, and then so B and then A, and then the negative two is the lower what limit, the lower limit. So that means that after that, you substitute the upper limit in your integration function, and you compare that to the substitution of the negative also in your integration, so that the difference will give you what, the value of what the indefinite integral, okay? But here, we don't have MC, so we need to solve this, okay? So that we see our fit and what it is expected of us generally in that particular case supposed to work out it. okay so let's see how we go let me see if we can copy this so let me copy this and then bring it up here let me cut the whole of this from this space yeah will i have this coming up oh come on okay so let me copy the whole of this come back here so let me bring it up here for you. Okay, so this is our question. So we asked to find what the value of what straight up the value of what this indefinite integral. So how do we go? So we follow the same rule for integration, and then you are good to go. So we have what two with an elongated x negative two. Okay, then we have what x squared minus two, then we have two x minus one, then bracket close like that. Okay, so before you can actually integrate this, you must first have to what expand. This is actually what binomial is, but you just have to expand the function so that you can see the real picture of what they are trying to say here. Okay, so what do we do? Let us expand. So we have what two with an elongated x negative two. So we expand this x squared multiplying what two x is supposed to get what? You're supposed to get two x cube law of indices. Okay. Then x squared multiplying negative one is supposed to get what? X squared. Then we have the negative two multiplying two x supposed to get what? Negative four x. The negative two multiplying two is supposed to get what? Plus what two? Bracket close. So let's see something like dx or something. That's about that's fine. So dx. Okay. So we're presented with that. Okay. So once you get this, then you just have to come in and then start with your integration. So we add one to the three, we divide the result. So straight up we'll have what two x to the power three plus one divided by four. So here too we have what x squared plus one divided by three. Then you have here four x to the power of one plus one divided by two. Then here we attach what the x to it. So we have what two x. Now we're standing, not forgetting our limits. Okay. Supposed to be there so that you don't forget. Because you are going to use it for your calculation purposes. Okay. So what do we do? So now we can straight up move. So now you can see that two can cancel four by what two. So we have what x to the power four divided by two. So we have here for x to the power three, x to the power three divided by three. Then we have here two can also cancel four by two. So we have here to what two x squared. Then we have here plus what two x. Don't forget your limit two, negative two. So once you get to this stage, it's a matter of substitution, okay? So all I want to do here is to say that whenever you see x is substitute two, which is the upper limit in the, in the same function here, so we have here as word uh, two, 
r to the power 4 divided by what, 2, okay? Then minus what, 2 to the power 3, r divided by 3. Then we have 2. Then we have here to be 2 to the power 2. Then we have plus 2 to the power what? So I'm multiplying 2, rather. Then bracket close. And you do same for the negative 2, 2 in that particular case. You do same for the negative what, 2. So you follow suit. So we have what? 2. That is negative 2 to the power 4 divided by 2 minus. So we have here to what? Negative 2 to the power 3 divided by 3. Then you bring in minus. We have 2. Then negative 2 to the power 2 plus 2. Negative 2. Bracket close for that too. So after you start seeing what the upper and lower limits you are comparing, actually you are comparing the values in there. So you make sure you do that comparison. So by comparison means that whatever you're going to get at the end of the day, then you sub you take the difference between the two and that will give you the result. Right? That will give you the result. So work it out and let me see in the comment section what you're going to get at the end of the day. So we are substituting what two into this function. Right, this function and also sub two what negative two. So that we compare the difference between the result of the substitution of the two and the negative two. And that'll give us so I want to see your answer in the comment section. What is the answer to this? That is your assignment. Work it out. Then question twenty-two. We are asked to do what? Let's see. He said if the marginal revenue in cities per unit, this is in cities, that's in Ghana cities, for a month is given by, so you see the marginal, you see the marginal uh, revenue, you see the marginal revenue, you see the marginal revenue, which is what? 500 minus what? 0.4x. What is the total revenue from the production and sale of what? 100 units. Okay. Somebody is saying that I should do what? Take what again? Let me see in the chat which question do you want me to retake it again. I mean, just to re-explain. Tag the question there in the comment section or in the chat section so that I can explain. Because I don't know the question you're talking about. Okay. So, we are asked to find what is the total revenue from the production and sale of 100 units. Very crucial here. So, Total revenue means that here we have been given the marginal revenue. That means it has already been differentiated. So we need to reverse it. We need to reverse it. We need to what? reverse it. So reversing will then give us what? The original function of the revenue. And then after that, we will substitute what? 100 units there. So that, that will give us our total revenue. So let's see how we go about this one too. It's very simple. Straightforward question there. Copy this. Let's like see if I can create an additional space for this. So what do we do? Okay, let me no this template. I don't like this template. I don't know, but I mean, let me check up this. Let me lay these ones. Okay, not necessary for now. So let me add up a page here. Mm, some small pages. Go. Add more to it. Just three. Okay. So let's go. So let me use this space for question 22 there. So we have this. All right. Ask question 22. So how do we go? Then we can say that our marginal function has been given with a differentiated form of what? The marginal revenue. Okay. So we have what? Uh, we have our marginal revenue. Oh, yes, what? So let me use MR, which is equal to what? 500 minus what 0 0.4 x 500 minus 0 0.4 x okay so how do we go about that so here since it has already been different we need to integrate so that we get what the revenue so we just have to 
bring in our elongated s to show us that we are integrating because remember this is actually an indefinite integral so i don't think you're gonna have a constant value there so when i integrate marginal value, i'll get what my revenue function as well because we are differentiate we are integrating respect to x so i'll get my revenue function so i'll follow the same integration so here this 500 so i'll add what x to the 500 so that becomes what 500 x okay and then here too i'll have what 0 0.4 x to the power of one i'll add one to the power right and then divide the result Re realize that when i add one plus i'm getting two so i'll divide by two so therefore my revenue function should be called notwithstanding because it's an indefinite integral indefinite means it doesn't have any limit so we bring in constant say k or c okay so what do we do once we have that the next thing we want to do here is that we have what 500x just have to repeat this remember two gun goes into a 0 0.4 as what 0 0.2 okay so we have x to the power 2 plus what k but if you can remember when we're discussing the concept of uh application of integration we said that at a point of production at a point of production at a point of production if our production is equal to zero three things happens here if you have our production level to be equal to zero three things will happen here you will get to know that your total cost will be equal to your total face cost your variable cost will be equal to what zero okay and then your total revenue is also going to go to what zero this is a concept when we have production level to be equal to what zero so at the production level of zero three things are happening here total cost go to what total face cost variable cost go to zero and total revenue is also go to what zero actually i'll drop that video link in the very session of this video so that if you haven't watched that you see that it's very important that you watch it actually explains the concept of integration and its application generally so at the production level of zero you make that assumption that at the production level of zero our total cost go to what our face cost variable cost go to zero total range goes equal to what zero so this is what we're going to say we will say that if that is the case then we can make that assumption that at the production level of zero we we'll have our total revenue being equal to what zero all right so that means that we we'll have what x to be equal to zero r of x also to be equal to what? zero so we just have to bring that and substitute it to the revenue function that we have derived generally so we we'll have what zero to be equal to what 500 zero 0 0.2 so here is going to give us zero to the power two plus what k so that means you have k to be equal to what zero k is equal to what zero k is equal to zero so if k is equal to zero therefore we can conclude that our revenue function should give us what 500 x minus 0 0.2 x square and that is all so once you get this revenue function then we can then find what the production total revenue from production and sale of what 100 units which is going to give us what which is going to give us what 100 into bracket I mean R into bracket 100 so whenever we see a sub 200 there so we have what 500 into bracket 100 minus 0 0.200 all squared there and we are good to go okay so what do we get so here we're going to get here so I think 50,000 then here to calculator can do this so I have in 0 0.2 multiplying what 100 or squared so i'm getting what 2000 so that's going to give me what 2000 and therefore i'm getting what 48,000 there as my final answer so this is going to be my total revenue when production and sales is what 100 units after the integration now i hope you are seeing how it goes it's very important that you know that and how you can actually apply let's see some chart here mm. oh, let's see what do i have here 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 here
I mean, he said that, please teach us what, how to use calculator to what, calculate the integration. Okay, I will do that. And then Hagan was saying, please uh, come again. Which which one? Okay, I think he has a reply here. Question 20, okay. I will do that. <clears throat> so question 20, what was the question there? Let's see. Question 20, what was the question? The integration, the integral, yeah. So the same thing I would do, okay? You just have to integrate it. Well, this is an indefinite word, integral. This is an indefinite integral, okay? So what do we do? For you to integrate, you add one to the power, and what do you get as a total result of the exponent divide by the whole function? So we add one plus three, we are getting more four. So it becomes three divided by four to the power of four. Then here we have one over s cubed. So we just have to rewrite it in a line form. By line form, I mean that you must rewrite this as more like what a whole number on its own. So one over s cubed will give us, and the whole will give us what? x to the power negative three. So we add one to the power negative three, and we are going to get negative two. We divide by what negative two as the result and we have three here since we are integrating respect to x we add x to the three and since it's an indefinite integral you introduce what a constant or k and you are good to what go so that is the whole idea in respect to that i don't know if i've answered your question generally there and i think one person also saying that calculator to calculate this uh, so calculator work very simple all i want to do is to bring in your calculator okay let me see if I can position this one so that I can see my calculator. Okay, so on your calculator, you see that we have this particular function on your calculator. I think below the alpha, you will see that button, which is this. Which is this that you can see. Okay, so we have what the box up and down. This is what we call the elongated x. You see the black sine elongated x so here the upper boss is the upper limit so we have two then the lower one is the lower which is what negative two so once you have that once you have that just have to so this boss that comes after the elongated x is also the functional area okay so you just have to key in your function so we have what alpha x square minus two then we have what we have 2 alpha x minus 1 bracket close. So once you are done, that's how to press equal to sign, you get your answer. So this is what I was getting 8 over 3. So index my you're going to get what 2.667. So this is actually how I use calculator. So, so below the alpha, you see that button there, which is what dy over ds. That is an integration word button that you can use to find in most cases in an indefinite, sorry, definite integral. That's where you can use that, but indefinitely just have to integrate it like that in that case. So if you have any question like that, and I hope I've answered your question. If you have any question like that, you can drop in the chat for us. So that is question and the various questions that we have answered. So question 22 is a done deal. You see there, we'll come back to the matrix very soon. So question 23, we have been given this, I think the same scenario there, but in this case, in the course form, if let's see what we have here coming so it goes like hmm. well, let's see if the marginal cost for the product is what 6x minus 2 and the production of 10 units results in a total cost of what 300 dollars what is the total cost of producing 150 i think it's 150 yeah, yeah 150 units of what production so what is the total cost of producing 150 units of production so how do we go the same thing so we just have to follow the principle that we've shared generally there so let me copy this oh, no come in copy copy this okay so let me bring it up here for you. Put it here. Oh, come on. 
it's not pasting i don't want to paste it okay so we have it here so how do we go so now we have what our marginal cost to be equal to what 6x minus 2 whatever you want you just have to integrate the marginal cost so that we get the original cost function and that will help us to find what the total cost we are asked to find what is the total cost it didn't say what is the marginal cost it said what is the total cost. so we need to find the total cost function so that we can do the substitution of 150 in there okay so if that is the case then let's find what the cost function the total cost so that means we're going to integrate to what next we want to integrate okay so when i integrate what marginal cost i'll get what my cost that would be my cost function say c of x since we are integrating respect to x integration of 6s i'll get what 6x to the power 1 plus 1 divided by 2 then here to our touch x to what which is the same thing as 0 plus 1 because 2s to the power 0 is the same thing as for 2 so now if i'm integrating i'll add 1 to the 0 and then i'll divide the result which is what 1 plus 0 we're getting what 1 because it's an indefinite integral you don't forget you bring in your uh constant so say k okay so if that is the case then we'll say that our cost function then should be equal to what so 2 goes to 3 6 so we have what 3 x square okay minus what 2 x plus k so this then give us our cost what function this will give us our cost function so once we are getting this as our cost function then we can look out for other information. They said that, and the production of 10 units result to the total cost of what? $300. So that means that if you have now here, we have been given the units that we have produced. If there wasn't any units given here, then we'll have to make an assumption that at the production level of zero, our total cost should be equal to our total face cost. Right. And then our variable cost will have been zero. And then our total revenue will have been what? zero two so that means we have made an assumption with respect to general i think that will have been respect to the total cost function and with that you'll be given the first cost in the question so that you quit the total cost with the first cost and then you substitute in the unit as what zero so that you can find what the value of k but here we have the unit already given so no big deal about making any assumption generally here okay so what do we do now we have what x to be equal to 10 units okay and we have the total cost for that is the cost the cost of that to be equal to what 300 dollars here so what do we do all i want to do here is to that we want to we are using these figures actually to find the value of k so i know that I, the cost is what 300 to be equal to what three I know x is 10 to the power 2 to 10 plus what k. So we want to make k the subject. Okay, so what do we do? We have here as what 300, and that should be equal to what 10 squared is what 100. So we have here as 300 minus 20k plus what I said 20k plus 20 minus minus 20 plus k rather. All right, so here we'll cancel this. So we'll be left with. 20 and that should be equal to k so 20 is going to give us k so once you are getting this that is k so therefore our cost function then becomes what it becomes what 3x square okay 3x square minus 2x plus what 20 now we know the value of k to be what 20 okay so that becomes our cost function so once you are getting this our cost function what is the requirement here? We are then asked to find the total cost of producing what? 150 units. So just have to substitute 150 units in the cost function then. So we have what? Cost of what? 150. And that should give us so 3 to bracket 150 squared. Okay. Minus 2, 150 plus what? 20. Straight up. You are good to go. So let's go so we have here to be so we have what three multiplying 150 squared you're gonna get what six seven five hundred 
Then here, one victim multiplying to supposed to get 300 plus 20. So what do we get? So here, minus 300 plus 20. So you're supposed to get what? Supposed to get something like 67 thousand two hundred and twenty dollars you can check the accuracies of the figures for me but the principle is the same thing that we have done here but most of the times we don't take care when you are substituting the figures you might get it what wrong so just have to check you see that arithmetic are all right so that you can follow it and then use it generally there so that is the whole idea under the integration and its issues generally there okay so question number what was our next question Question number 24 now we are into mattress a bit of mattress you have been given this mattress given that two one four two given that two given that two one four two x multiplying or three one is equal to seven eight find the value of y so how do you find that any question with respect to what we have covered so far, if you have any question, you can bring it up. Any question? See yeah. that? Any question? If there are no questions. Let's move on. Generally, do all to share the video, like it as well. Oh, let's go. If you have any questions, just drop in the chat for us so that we go. Okay, let's flow. So, question number 24, we are asked to find the value of what? Why straight up? So, let's see how we go by that. So, let me copy this question, sort of bring it here. Ooh. Okay, and bring it up here. We can house it in here. Okay, got it right. Okay, so we are asked to find the value, so we just have to follow it carefully. So let's see how we go with this. So here we have what two, one. We have two, one. Okay, four, and then two x. Remember, the numbers within the matrix or within the rectangular array is called what? Entries or elements. In most at times in MCQ type, you may see some definitions in there. The numbers within the rectangular array is called, it is called an element or entries generally. So if you don't see entries, you see elements in there generally. So here you want to multiply what? A two by two by what? This is a two by two matrix multiplying by what? A two by one matrix is what? Three one. And that should be called seven eight there. So how do we go? Remember, this is the order of a matrix. By order of a matrix, we have what? M multiplying N, where M represent the row and represent what? The column. This is the order. So you want to make sure you keep that clean and smooth okay so how do we then find the value of what oh this is the value of x not y don't have any y here then i need to adjust my question this x not y okay so let's see how we go so here what i want to do follow carefully is that you have what we have actually we have what uh let me say we have two rows okay so this is row one row two this is row one this is row two so and we have what column one then column one then column two okay so how do we go about that let's see so all I want to do is to take what the first row to multiply what the first row of the first matrix multiplying what the first column of the second matrix. So this is what 
column, say column one of the second matrix, which is what? A two by one matrix. Okay. So let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. So we then have to what? Multiply two, one with a column word. Three, one. So we we'll have what? The first entry or element in the bracket that's going to give us what? So here two multiplying three. Okay. Then you say plus, then one also multiply one here. Then we are done with the first entry. And the same, okay, so this actually a two by two with respect to what? A two by one column. So once the first row multiply the second column of the first matrix, then it come back to what? The second row, okay? Because this is just only one column. You only have one column in what the second matrix. So then it is going to result to what a two by one matrix. It's going to result like this. Three, one. So once you are done with the first row, then we come to the second word row multiplying the first column of the second matrix. So now four multiplying three. So now we have what? Four multiplying three. Okay. Four multiplying three plus. Now we have what? Two X multiplying what? One. And that should be equal to what? Seven over eight. So once you get this, since we are interested in finding the value of S, now you can see correspondence, right? You can see correspondence. You just have to deal with their correspondence and you're good to go so now i can say that i have what four multiplying three plus what two x multiplying one and that should be equal to what eight so i just want to solve for it so i have two x to be equal to eight minus what twelve or four multiplying three supposed to get what twelve okay so therefore i have here as two x to be equal to negative four so therefore i have what x to be equal to what negative two I hope you accept that. So that becomes the value of x. So this is actually a two by two multiplying what a two by one. So we realize that here we have what two by two multiplying what multiplying what a two by one matrix. It is two by one because we have what two rows here. This row one, row two, and there's just one column there. Yeah. So here. For you to determine the order, that will be the result of your multiplication. We have what M, N, M, and then N. You, you need to have what? Two M's to be equal on the two metrics that you have. And then you, you take into account the multiplication of the two. That will give you the order of the metrics. So you can clearly see that we have two here. We have two here as M. Okay. So the two that is common to that you take it as one and that will give you the first two and then naturally the one is the one that is actually taking an off should i say offside yeah i mean it's not common to also just have to multiply by that and then you're good to go so you realize that we have what this n and m which is what so we have n and m which is two so that means that the order at the end of the day is supposed to be what two by what n. So you realize that you must always have what two numbers or two order to be the same, and then the non pair will give you the result after you multiplying the two matrices in that particular case. Okay, so that is the goal. So let's take note of that. So that is question number. That is question number what 22. Now question number 23. Wait, I said question number 22. Wow. Question number 24 rather. So question number 25 is also follow the same rule here. We have P to be equal to what? Negative. We have P to be equal to what? Negative or two, four. And then we have five three and we have q to be what two negative three and we have what one negative three so we have to find the value of a and b 
said that PQ is equal to what? A1, negative 3, 4, then negative 3, 7, P. So you have to find the value of V. So here, all I want to do is to find what? P, Q. So matrix P and Q multiply. This is a 2 by 2 matrix. And after you equate to the matrix that has been equated generally there, and you are good to go. Okay. So that is the idea that you want to what? half generally so let's see how we go through with the multiplication and then get it done generally any question drop in the chat for us as we continue with the discussion so let's see how we go let me see if i can copy this right here so that we can use it for our calculation purpose on a different page now let me bring up this can we use this page? Okay, let me create an additional page first. So let me bring it up here. Oh, I want to copy this. It is not copying. All right, there we go. So we have it here. So let's see how we go. So we do the same multiplication, multiplying what P and then Q. So let's see how we go with that. Okay, so we have what? PQ. So PQ is a 2 by 2 matrix. PQ is a 2 by 2 matrix. So we're going to multiply that. So we have PQ to be equal to what? So we bring in the matrix values. We have negative 2, 4. Then we have 5, 3. Okay. Then multiplying what? 3, negative 2, 1, negative 3. All right. So we just have to first multiply this. Okay. So let's do the multiplication and see how far we go. So here, this is a two by two matrix. So I don't know if we should get the result of a two by two matrix. Okay. So we have what? We have row one, then row two. Okay. And we have what? Column one, column two. Follow carefully. So what do we do? So the first row of the first matrix will multiply the first column of the second matrix. The first row of the first matrix will multiply the first column of the second matrix. And that will give you the entry for the first word. Or that will give you the first element of the result matrix. The first element of the result matrix. So what do we do? What do we do? So here, what I want to do here is to say that we have in the negative two for multiplying what three one. So let's bring in that. So we have what we have negative two multiplying what three. Okay, negative two multiplying three, and then we say plus. Then we have what negative two multiplying three, and then we have what four. Follow carefully for multiplying what one. That will give us our first entry of the first matrix result. I mean, the result matrix. So once we are done with the first column, multiplying first row, sorry, multiplying the first column of the second matrix, we do the same thing. Take the first row of the first matrix and then multiply by the second column of the second matrix the second column of this and that will give you the next entry on the row side of the result matrix so that was going to give us what negative two on the other side like this negative two multiplying what negative two plus four multiplying what three that's negative three here yeah, you know make sure that you are very careful unless any mistake that you made will affect your calculation Okay, will affect your calculation. So you realize that we're having what? We're having, we're having what? The first row multiplying what? The, oh, come on. Let me use, okay. Oh, why is it tinted like that? Okay, so we're having the first row of the first met multiplying what? The second, the first column of the second matrix. I mean, that is what I'm trying to say. 
all right and then we also have what the same first row also multiplying what the second column of the second matrix and that gives us the element of the first row of the result matrix the first row of the matrix is what i mean the first row of the result which is this of the result matrix that we are what we are find and then after you are done with that do the same thing all right sorry about that Ooh, that's cut i'm coming well oh, come in come in let me check up with this i don't know what happened mm -hmm. Let's see. Yes, how did that play that? I don't know what happened. Ooh. Come in. Let's see if I have it here. I'm supposed to have it here. Come in. I think we are there. Okay, that's fine. We are good to go. Okay, so let me share up my screen. There we go. So, this is what I was saying. That once you are done, then we come toward the second word. Once you are done, we come to the second word. Row of the first match also to multiply word. The same order. Okay, and that will give us what the second row of the result matrix which is this so we have what five three multiplying three and one so we have what five multiplying three plus three multiplying one okay and the next thing we want to do is also have what the same five multiplying negative two okay plus three multiplying negative three this is how we go by the multiplication approach so let's see what we get so i don't know the our pq should be equal to this so let's expand so we have pq to be equal to so now in a simple form or in a simple language negative two multiplying three are getting negative six plus four it's supposed to give us negative two so straight up negative two on the first entry okay negative two there then negative two multiplying negative you are getting positive four then four multiplying three we are getting what negative twelve so in between negative twelve plus four is supposed to get what negative eight here and then here too we have 15 plus 3 we are getting 18 and here we have negative 10 negative 9 you are getting what negative 19 right and that should give us the pq so once you get the pq the next thing you want to do the next thing we want to do is to equate that to what we're having here we said that pq should be equal to what so now let's equate that to with let me reduce the intensity of this okay so now we have what pq being equated to so we have a1 then we have what negative 3 negative 4 plus oh come on plus we have plus we have what Three multiplying what? We have three multiplying negative one, negative three. Then we have seven and then B. I thought I would show you how to use calculator to speed so that you don't waste time here in the examination condition. Okay. So what do we do now? We have this being equated as our PQ. So we are asked to find what A and B. Okay, so we can see the A line up issues here just have to line them up okay and we can also see the b line up issues here too just have to line them no i think you can see this let me use this so just going to line them up so that we flow so now we can say that all that i want to do is to see this so we have what you can clearly see that we have what negative two we have a then we have for the multiplication of this so we have for negative two okay being equal to a okay i hope you are following that being equal to a plus then throw multiply what the first word entry in the 
second or in the third i think the third matrix so we have or three multiplying negative one this is how it's supposed to be okay so three multiplying negative one because this is what we call uh scalar multiplication of what the matrix okay so three multiplying negative one so we have for negative two to give us a negative three so when negative three joins negative two it becomes negative one sorry i said negative become positive one so we have negative two plus what three and that should give us a so we have here as what positive one and a is equal to what one so if a is equal to one plug my device so if a is equal to one then we are good to go so once you have a is equal to one you follow the same thing and then solve for what b okay so b2 we have what where is position we have the 19 coming up yeah the 19 so we have what the 19 coming up which is what negative 19 to be equal to so we have negative 4 plus three multiplying what the b scalar multiplication okay so we have what negative 19 to be equal to negative four plus what three b so when the negative four joins negative 19 we will get to what negative 15 so we have negative 19 plus four and that should give us three b so here will give me negative four 15 and that should give me three b so dividing both sides by three we are going to get b to be equal to negative 5. So therefore, the value of therefore the value of a and b. So a should be equal to 1, b should be equal to what? Negative 4, 5. And then you are good to go. So that is the whole idea. We are going to learn how to use calculator to deal with that. I'm coming with that. But let's see some chart that I need to attend to so that will flow in that case let's see what we have here saying that uh is it perfect it's saying that please i'm confused about how you got the group light terms in question 23 in finding k okay i will attend to that then Julius is saying that, let's see, what is the highest number of matrix elements we can have? Aspect that would depend on your question that you're going to have in the examination. But for most cases, the elementary questions like elementary, as I elementary, quantitative methods for business in relation to this, most of the times you won't be stressed so much. Most of the time you have the highest so far you go in your exam will be like a two by two matrix. But for it to be a written type, you can be given a three by three matrix to work on. In most cases, you'll see some of them very soon there, where you have to use Kramer's rule or just use the equation approach to solve for the values. But most cases, two by two, three by three matrix, that will be the goal for the matrix. So, I mean, that shouldn't be a problem for you. Your only problem should be uh, how can you solve those questions that it should be and once you understand you should be able to solve it generally there so uh isaac is saying question 22 what oh, does question 22 then let's see what we have here okay so that is the issue there so take note of that so uh okay okay so question what was saying question 23 how is grouping the light terms with respect to k oh here we have 300 300 years. so when the 300 joins the time becomes what zero okay so negative 20 plus k so the 20 will then also join in the 300 okay because this this is what i'm trying to say so 300 when it joins the 300 becomes zero so that means that when also the negative 20 joins zero it also become positive so we have 20 is equal to what k well 20 plus zero is anything as what 20 and that will give you the value of k i hope you have got what i'm trying to say here so that is the whole idea with this okay so let's take note of that so 
that is that. So question number question number twenty six. Now we have this question. We are asked to find the determinants of the matrix X. We are asked to find the determinants of the matrix X for question twenty six. Find the determinants of the matrix X. So how do you find the determinants? So here we have two approaches that you want to go to find the determinants. Okay, but most of the times I prefer using the second approach. I mean it's very simple and easy to go. Okay. But I will see too can we can present the two approach for you to go. So we have to find a determinant of this matrix X. So let me copy this, bring it up here. Like she you can have some space for this. Okay, so mostly I prefer my students to go by this approach because it's very simple to go. What the one I'm going to about to use to solve for this. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so to find the determinant of this, that means you want to find that word x. By conversion, you can write as what that x. So here, this is what we're going to do. For you to find that x of this, you, the second approach is that you are going to repeat this. So you have what one, two, three. Then you have one negative four two. Then you have one three two. You are going to repeat what the first two columns. You are going to repeat the first two columns. So that will give you what? One, two, three, one, negative four, and then uh two. So you're going to repeat the first two columns. So this will give you this. The first two columns of the original matrix given in the question. So once you have that, then you start to do what we call arrow indication so you're going to draw an arrows through these uh through this word matrix generally here okay so first arrow i want to indicate is i want to have this in respect to this i want to have this so to form what a diagonal so you're going to indicate a diagonal section so i'll have my first diagonal like this so that will give me the first diagonal so both up. So we're going to have the upward diagonals and then we get into the di downward diagonals. So I'll also have the second one coming up here. Then I'll have the third one coming up here. If you remember, when we were finding what the determinant of a 2 by 2 metric, we said that if I have that, let's say A to be equal to A, follow carefully, to be equal to A, B, C, and D. We said that it is what the product of the upward diagonal compared with the product of the downward diagonal. So in that, in other words, we said that that A should be equal to what? It should be equal to A D minus B C, if you can remember. So that means that we'll find what the product of what A and then D subtract B C from it. That will give us the determinant of what. So the same we're going to do here. You are going to find the product of the uh should i say the downward diagonal compared with the product of the upward diagonal so this is going to be my upward approach or you let maintain this so that you don't you use that as a reference guide so once we are done with i also have our downward diagonals coming up generally there so we also start from here sorry about that downward diagonal we have it here so and this one okay and then this two here so this is going to be our downward diagonal generally so once we are done with that the next thing we want to do is to find the product of this upward and downward okay so upward and downward so upward and downward so let's see how we go so generally that's going to be what the difference between what the downward compared with the upward and that will give you what your determinant okay as we have here so we're having here as flexi like downward compared with the upward okay so the same issue we are going to present here so therefore we can say that our determinant our determinant our determinant question uh 
I want to say equation 25. Okay, I'll come back. So determinant x, we have the product of the downward. Okay. So we have what? Negative 4 multiplied by negative. Negative 1 as a negative 1. Positive 4 multiplied by negative 4 multiplied by 2. You suppose you get what? Negative 8 plus. Then 1 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by You're supposed to get 9. And then 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by supposed to get 4. So plus 4. Then you compare that to the upward. Okay. So 2, 3 multiplied by negative 4 multiplied by is supposed to get what? Negative 12. Okay. And then 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by is supposed to get what? Plus what? 6. And then we have 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 is supposed to get what? Plus 4. So we do the comparison and then we are good to go. So negative 9 plus 4 is supposed to get 1. So 1. 1 plus 4 is supposed to get, 1 plus 4 is supposed to get what, 5. Compare that to, so negative 12 plus 6 is supposed to get negative 6. Or better to 6 plus 4, you are going to get what, 10. Then negative 12 plus 10 is supposed to get negative 2. So that means you have our determinant to what, negative, negative, you are getting what, 7. So it is going to be our determinant, negative what, 7, sorry, positive 7 rather. Then you are good to go. Positive seven. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So that is how we find determinant. And most times I found it simple in finding my determinant. In finding my determinant, it's very simple to go. Okay, in finding determinant. But if you want to go by the second one, you are going to do like Jesus Christ cross. You have your hand. To do some crossing like this. Most of the time, I don't prefer using that. I don't want my students to learn that, so most of the time, I don't even teach them. I just want to go by this approach. You are good to go. Very simple, straightforward. Okay, so that is how we find determinant of a matrix in that case. Oh, let's see what we have here. So Julius is saying that let's see the last one, which last one? You just did find A and B. Come again. The last one you just did finding A and B is confusing. Come again. You can rewrite because I don't understand what you are trying to say. Generally up there. Finding A and B means you are following the matrix approach. So you multiply it after that. Once you multiply it, I mean, <laughs> it says confusing the brothel. All right, so this is what I'm trying to say. You see, when you are done with the multiplication, all that I want to do is that you want to do what we call element correspondence. So you can clearly see that the A here that you see here. Oh, I thought my board is up. Come in. Let me bring my board. So is what I'm trying to say here. So this is what I'm trying to say. You see the A that you see here. This A that you see here. It has its corresponding element in what? Negative two. Well, we can see that got their position on the same what? Uh, same. I mean the same position. That's what I'm trying to say. And then you can clearly see that. The same is also having its corresponding with respect to negative one. Negative one. Yeah, this one. Okay. And then you have three multiplying the matrix that. So that means that the three is actually what? A scalar multiplication of the matrix. So you just have to multiply the three by negative one and then say that negative two should be equal to A because we're told that here is plus. At the middle here is plus. Okay, so A plus three multiplying negative one. And that should give you, oh, my mic is on, yeah. And that should give you what? The negative two. So that's how we are following. And then that of the B to the same approach. We see we have where the B is positioned. It has the same element as that of what? Negative four. 
okay and that of what negative what 19 negative 19 so the same thing you say that negative 19 should be equal to what negative 4 plus 3 multiplying b and that should be equated to a negative 19 and you find the value of b so that is the whole idea that i'm trying to bring it up so it's not actually a confusing one once you're able to multiply it's supposed to be able to deal with that so let's take note of that saying that question can question 25 the second part please can you take it again Can you take it again? Okay, I'll take it again. And then Julio is saying that there is a mistake in the last column. Which mistake and which question are you talking about? Which mistake and which column are you talking about? You can check and let's see. You can drop in the question for us so that we can see where you are saying there is a mistake. So we can correct it. Okay, so, but I don't think there should be a mistake in there. Based on how for it, there shouldn't be any mistake. So you can check and let's see where you think there is a mistake so that we can push it from there. All right, so that is the whole idea we are trying to explain here. Okay, so. So that is the whole idea we are trying to explain here. So let's take note of that. Uh, so let's see what we have here. So that is question, I think question 25 that we have in there. So let's take note of that. So let's see the remaining set of questions and then we bring it up to an end. So that was question 25, then question 26 follow the same thing. Okay, what is, what is question 26 rather? Sorry. And then question 27, we also have to find the value of C given that the determinant of the matrix Q is equal to zero. So that means when you find the determinant of the matrix, going to give you zero. So that means that here you are going to say that this is what you're going to say. You are going to say that question 27, I mean, okay, you just have to find the determinant and equal to zero. That is all. Find the determinant equal to zero. So you have what? You will have you will have your c multiplying what so you have c minus 2 multiplying c minus 3 okay compare with what 2 multiplying 1 and that should give you what 0 this is how you find determinant for this you multiply this okay and then you multiply this so you find determinant of what the product of the downward uh the product of the downward compare with the product of the upward okay so you just have to expand all right so let us find you have what c square here you're going to get what negative 3c here you're going to get what negative 2c then you get plus 6 minus 2 and that should give you 0 oh okay so once you have that then you have what let me create a session a page for this so that we go. So you have c square minus 5c, okay, plus 4, and that should give you 0. So here, calculator work, you are good to go, okay? Calculator work, and you are good to go. So let's see what we have here. Let's see what we have here. So let me go to my mode straight up. So mode, I'll look for. For your calculator, you can have you go to mode, you go to five, you go to three. Okay. So here with my case, I have it down here. So straight up. So here I have it to be one, negative five, then four. So I'm having what my first C to be what one. So I'll have C C minus one. Then I'll have 
c minus 4 and that should be equal to 0 so therefore we have c to be equal to positive 1 comma 4 let me check up this i think somebody's raising a concern here oh, let's see what we have here let me bring it up first Julio is saying that can you check uh the determinant of matrix you made which question did i make a mistake i want to see which question well we have a lot that we have solved and hopefully we'll see if that is a mistake in there okay question 26 rather determinant question 26 okay which one let's see let me bring it up oh. Is it this one? If it is this one, let me know. Because if it is this, we have one, one, two, three, one, negative four, two. We have one, three, and two. So you just have to repeat the first two word columns, okay? And then just have to apply. So you find the product of downward. So here is going to give me what? Negative eight. Here is going to give me nine. Here is going to give me what? Four. So you can bring up your why you see a possible mistake and let's correct it if that is so but i don't think there will be a mistake in there because i'm pretty sure about what i've drawn and then the upwards we have negative 12. for the first one you have six positive and then we have what four so you can check that from your calculation let's see so that is the whole idea we are trying to explain so let's take note of that Oh, sorry, I think I I brought it up here. This is what I was talking about here. So you can check where there's possible, but I don't think there's a mistake in there. So you can check from your calculation. Let's see. So that is question twenty seven that we have here. Question twenty seven that we have here. So that means we have what C to be one and then four. We have to find the values and you can clearly see values means it can be more than what one value so you have what that question 27 rather take the calculator away for question 27. <laughs> he said take the calculator away for question 27. question 27 i mean you can't have a calculator work unless you follow the normal calculation if the values are given where we don't have any unknown value, that's where you can actually use the uh, my camera is off, uh, coming. Yeah, so as I was saying, question 27, you can't take, you can't use the calculator to solve for it, right? Because the values in the some are unknown there's no way you can use calculator to solve for this unless if the values were known then you want to find determinants can you calculate to deal with that that one is very pretty simple to go okay but since the values are unknown you can use if we're to be an equation then you'll have used calculator to deal with that like after we find the determinant and then punching like this we can use the equation i think that's where we use calculator to solve of course when we arrive at this point we're using calculator for it right yeah and that's what we're getting here as one and then four. But where you have the metrics and the unknown values, I don't think there's calculator that can use to solve for that. So let's take note of that. Let's take note of that. Okay. So like she for the other aspect. Julius, I'm waiting for the question that you were sharing that there is da 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 da. So nice and take note. Then question 28. We have this. Using Kramer's rule, find the value of z in the system of equation. Convert it to the decimal places. So Kramer's rule. You're talking about the last part. Yeah, that is what I'm trying to I was explaining, Nelson. The last part of the deal is this. Let me bring up so that you see what I'm trying to explain here.
Oh, sorry. I thought my board is up. Come in. You are saying that the last part that you use the calculator, the last part, okay. Okay, so the last part, this is what I was saying. Let me bring up the screen once again. The last part of the deal here depends on the calculator that you are using. Okay, with my I can easily flow with the calculator and go. Okay, so here we have what c squared minus 5c plus 4. So straight up, you just go to mode, whatever calculator you're using, just go to mode, you go to 5, and then you locate what a squared plus b s plus. But my case, when I go to mode, I can straight up select it from here, so I'll have it here. So that means that here, the values that I have here is what the coefficient of what x here in this case is going to be what one and then we have negative five for b and then we have c to be four so when you solve that you're going to get one then you get what four and that's be the answer and you are good to go so that is how we use calculator for that so take note of that now let's get back to this guy He's saying that, let's see, it is three, two, one, the last column, but it is, it is three, two, one, the last column, but it is what, but is that I, I did it at three, two, two, let's see, question 20, where is it? The last column. The last column, ooh, Galaxy. He said this word, colon. Well, the colon here, we don't have any three, two, one here. It is actually one, two, one, three, two. Ah, okay. I see, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. But the rules remain the same. I've seen it, but the rules remain the same. I, I mean, that will give what an answer to a new question. Remember, this wasn't an MC type, it was just a cherry type. So, this is what he's saying that you see with the X is supposed to be one, three, one, and not I made it as what one, three, two. Hope you can see what I'm trying to say. It's supposed to be one, three, one, but. I made it as one, three, two. So, I mean, so far as the principle holds, it's fine. No problem with that. So thanks for the correction generally there. All right. Then, uh, can you say that please? When are we doing what time value of money objectives questions? Uh, we'll see what that will be done next time but not certainly not now. So I've added that to our question list. We'll do that going forward. Okay, so that is the whole idea. We want to actually bring it up here. So let's take a note of that. So I think we have this question for you. Kramer's rule, or where is it? Question 28. Oh, I thought my board is up. Let me bring up my board. Question 20, we asked to use what? Kramer's rule to find the value of what? Z in the system of the equation. So to use Kramer's rule is very simple. You first have to write this in the matrix form. And then you have the second approach is that you are going to actually what? Place in you. I'm coming. Let me check this so that will just how to go. Yeah. Come in, come in. 
just wait for me to come in. Um, what are we just? I have six. So uh, using the Kremers rule, as I was saying, you let me present you with some theoretical understanding there so that we can see how far we go. So give me a sec. Let me present this for you so that you know what is expected of you coming.
So, thanks for waiting. Just want to finish up and sort my camera up. So, as I was saying, when it comes to crime metro, that's I think the last part so that we are done. When it comes to the crime metro, we have to find the value of Z in the system. But when it comes to crime, this is how it goes. So that use that approach to solve this question on your own. All right. So if you have something like this, uh. Let me create an, a scenario. So let's say we have, oh, come on. We have, let's say 3x plus 4y. Okay, and then we have, let's say, x minus 2y. Here is equal to 4, and here is equal to, let's say, 5. It's just random numbers, okay? To deal with the Kramer's rule approach, all that you want to do is to rewrite this in a matrix form. So by writing this, you have what three four the same thing then here one negative two okay and that will multiply by what these variables is x and y and that should be equated to what four five any question on this drop in the chart so once you have this to use primary we approach it to solve for this what do we do now we have let's name these uh metrics we have here let's say to be a Let's say, let's say that here is B and here is what C. So to use the Kramer's rule to deal with this, to let's say to solve for X. So to solve for X using Kramer's rule, okay, you are going to say that you are going to what? Replace what? The first column of what? Matrix A. You are going to replace the first column of matrix A, which is what this. You are going to replace what? The first column of matrix A, which is what? 3, 1 by what? The C, column C, which is what? 4, 5. So that means we will have what? We will have 4, 5. Okay, then we have 4, four negative four, 2. So once you have that, you then have to divide this by the matrix what? A, which is what? Which is what? 3, 1, 4, and then negative 2. So do you know what you're going to do? You're going to find determinant of this. So you find determinant, you also find determinant of this. So determinant of the two. So when you find determinant of the two, when you divide, you're going to get what? The value of what? X. So that means that if I want to find the determinant for this, on top here, I'll get what? Two by four, I'm getting what? Eight, compare with what? 20. So I'll have what? Negative eight, compare with negative 20. Then divided by here to the same thing. I'll have what negative six compare with what four. So I'm having here, this was just random numbers I'm using. So you'll be having here as what negative 28 divided by negative 10. And I don't know, you're going to get what? I think you get positive for 2.8, 2.8 there. So always rewrite in the matrix form and then replace what their result value, which is what four and five here in the first column so that you can find the value of x so when you replace c in here you find what determinant of the numerator then divided by what the original matrix which is a three four one and negative two and that'll give you the value of x to do same for that of what y2 you are going to replace what the second column of matrix a by c and then divide by the original matrix a and you follow the same you find the determinant of the two then that will give you the result of the x and y. So the same thing you're going to do here with respect to this question. The same thing you're going to have here. You are going to rewrite this. So you let me copy this. So straight up, we just have to do that. But that is a long process that you would do. But in examination condition, where it is MCQ type, you just use calculator to solve for it. Okay. I'm just saying calculator, but I'm not showing the calculator approach. I'll show you very soon so that we'll end it up here. So if you have this, all that you want to do is to rewrite this in a matrix form. So you have what? You will have you will have here to be two. Let's follow two, two, negative one. So you have two, negative one, and then what? Two here. Remember all these things are equated to. They have actually brought in their constant values here. I hope you can see this. Let me. Ship in the value so that I can see what I'm saying. 
these ones, I can equate them to what? their respective equations here. So I can have negative two, positive two, negative one, two, and I have one, three, four, have here to be one, two, and then one. So this is going to be, say the first matrix, and that will multiply in what? X. That will multiply in what? X, Y, and then Z. Okay. And that should be equal to, so here the 5 and then the 1, negative 1, that we can bring it back to where the zeros are. So it becomes what? Negative 5, positive 1, and then 2. So you have this. So let's say this is A. Let's say this is what? A, this is B, and this is C. So to find Z means that the value of Z is going to go. That's what we have to find. The value is going to be. It's going to be that you're going to find what the c to replace the third column because z is on the third column here all right because realize that to find x you're going to replace c in the first column to find y you're going to replace the c in the second column and to find z you're going to replace the c in the third column so you have what two negative one and then you have what negative five okay so you have negative five one and then two and then just have to repeat the first two columns in A. So you have here to be one, one, three, and then two. So once you have this, you find determinant of this divided by determinant of what A, which is what this determinant of A. So you find determinant of both sides and then you are good to go. So you follow the approach that I saw when you're using the upward arrows and the downward arrows to find that of this. And then you also find depth of A. And then you find the value of Z. I'm not going to do that for you. Do that and provide your answer in the comment section for us. Okay. So that is the idea about uh, primary rule. But if it's an MCQ, the calculator will help you so much. Okay. So you don't waste too much time. You just go to mode. You go to five. And then for the calculator, you see this uh, values in there. With the three values, so we have this system of three unknown equations. Let me expand this so that you can see what is happening here. Okay, you see something like this on the calculator. So just have to be substituting the values in there. You are good to go. So let me try to see if we can pull up this. Okay, let me reduce so that you can see. So here we have what the first equation we have two. Okay, we have negative one. Then we have two. Then second equation. Okay, so here is what negative five. The constant. Then here two. We have what one. Then we have three. Then we have four. Yeah. Then we have here to be what positive one. Then we have here to be one. Then we have here to be two. Then we have here to be one. Then we have here to be negative two. So once you have this, you just have to press equal to sign. So realize that we are getting x to be what? Depends on the calculator. You're getting x to be equal to negative 10. And how you input in your values, 10 over 3. Then let's see for y. So y, I was getting what? 1 over 5. And then that of z, I'm getting what? 14 over 15. So we can check if that is true. Depend on how I input in the values. Supposed to get something like this. So that is the whole idea you are trying to uh, plug generally here. So let's take note of that. Yeah. So that is the whole idea you are trying to realize. So that is the issue about the crime issue. So if it is not. It is not an MCQ type. You can use. I mean, if it's an MCQ type, you can use calculator for it. But if it's a written type, you must go by the approach so that you can solve for the values generally there. So let's take note of that. Let's check. I think that will be all. So you can check the accuracy of the values because I am putting the figures there. And the last question here is chain rule. Okay, so here, very simple, straightforward to go. So to differentiate this kind of question, 
you don't use formula okay it's very simple to go so let me show you the approach bring it on a fresh page so that we are done any other question you can throw in a chart for me so let me bring it up here so it asks you differentiate this okay so what do we do to differentiate this means that you have four so first thing you want to do is to differentiate the power just was six so you have four your dy over the x to be equal to so we bring the six down so that six will multiply the coefficient of the function here which is 2x cubed plus what 4x squared plus 2. So once you differentiate the 6, you then differentiate what the terms in the bracket. Differentiate the terms in the bracket. Okay. So differential of 2x cubed, you are getting what 6x squared. Differential of 4x squared, we are getting what plus 8x. And differential of 3 is supposed to get 0 because it's a constant. Okay. So once you are done with the differential of the individual items in the bracket, you don't have to repeat the whole function, which is what 2x cubed plus what 4x squared plus 3, and then have your six repeated and subtract one from the six. This is how we differentiate what functions of what higher derivatives. Very simple without formula, straightforward. So first, you differentiate the six by bringing the six to multiply what the coefficients of the function. And then second, you differentiate what the individual what terms in the function or in the bracket. And lastly, you repeat the whole function with its power and subtract one from the power. And that is all about the differential of higher derivatives with higher powers. So that means that then they will have what six multiplying six, we are getting what 36, 36 x squared. Then six multiplying eight, we are getting what 48 x. Hope that is true. You can check that and let's see. Okay. And then since all is multiplying, you're gonna have here so 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3 to the power 5, and you are done. So this is how we differentiate function of this kind. And you are good to go. Straightforward, simple, and easy to go. So that is the whole idea you want to unravel here so that we go, go, go. Any other question for me? Let's see what we have here. Oh, okay, I think I've attended to this. I'm trying to use calculator for the determinant, but I'm not getting it. I think I've explained this already to you. Then uh, again, is saying that I had my so so please, I think you should relax and understand it before you use calculator. Okay, that is fine. So that is the whole idea we are trying to explain generally here. So let's take note of that. Let's take note of that. Any other question? If there are no other question, then we'll be glad to end here. Thank you so much for joining us today on this section for joining us today so thank you so much for joining us today on this section always a great having your way or coming our way to assist you so you make sure you revise have a good sleep and then you attend the examination and then go there with a the career that you pass the examination excel so much more Make sure to give the thumbs up on this video, like the video as well, and share it out with your friends who may be interested in this kind of presentations to help them to also to pass the exam generally at the end of the day. Like, if this is your first time, do want to subscribe to the channel and then let's get going. And for the most part, we are still on our paid class that we have, or our master class. So if you want to enroll, uh, this uh, contact you can contact us and then you can join our class. Oh, let me bring my board so that you can see what I'm saying here. If you want to join the class, it's for our paid student. You can contact us with you are in Ghana here or outside. You have 233, three. then you have 0, you have 50910. Nine seven eight. No, I think there's a mistake here. Zero five zero zero nine one zero nine seven eight. 
yeah so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah so this is how it's supposed to be so you can contact us on this number if you want to enroll then it goes for 280 Ghana cities if you're outside the equivalent or you just find the equivalent dollars for it per semester very simple and easy affordable to enroll just join our paid class get access to all our content and then other uh, assistant that will help you to pass an excel in the exam so you can contact us if you want to enroll so that we can get it done generally the end of the day all right so let's take note of that all right all right so i'll see you in the next section and other backs in your exam all right bye you're right <laughs>